Hello, I'm Tom West. I want to welcome you again to my YouTube channel where we teach you the Bible and uh, hopefully bring you some inspiration that will make you better and draw you closer to Christ. I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel and share this video with someone else that can be very helpful to them. I want to mention that late on Tuesday every week or early on Wednesday, I will post what I'm what I'm calling my midweek word. And it's kind of a summary of a Bible study I will have done a day or so earlier. And it'll just be a, a way to touch base with God in the middle of the week, hear what he's saying, what he's saying to me. Maybe it'll be uh, impactful to your life. So be looking for that. And um, and then uh, every Saturday, I will bring this message. And this, uh, you know, the message from the book of Daniel is what I'm working through right now. And this one I called the error of Nebuchadnezzar. He was the ruler of Babylon in those days. Uh, the Babylonian king, good old Nebuchadnezzar, made a strategic error. He made a lot of them, but this is one in particular that he made. And it's one that's often repeated by government authorities in all ages. In fact, it's one that's repeated by all people in all times. Nebuchadnezzar recognized the hand of God in human affairs. But he would then revert to recognition of false gods of various sorts and give them the credit for the things that were the providence of God, the things that God provided, the God provided. Let me give you a recent example of this. I built the greatest economy in the history of the world. That same man would recognize that the economy was the blessing of God. Flip-flop, back and forth. Not only do government officials do this, we all do it to some extent. Uh, we come off with things like, well, I earned 50000 more this year than I did last year. What about the God who provided you with the success? See, too often we just leave him out. Government officials do that. We do that. Let's walk through the error of Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4. And it's a huge, huge error, and it cost him, cost him big time. The king wrote a letter to the world, which he assumed he had authority over. In, in verse 2, he says, It is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. That's Daniel 4, 2. In that verse, he recognizes that the God had done great things for him, and he gave the God credit for that. Next, King Nebuchadnezzar tells the world about having another dream that he did not understand. He always had to call Daniel in to help with those things. Daniel had interpreted dreams for him before, and the king explains that Daniel came into his presence again. In verse 8, the king points out that Daniel is also called Belteshazzar, which is a name after the king's personal god, little g. And he goes so far as to affirm that the spirits of the holy gods are in Belteshazzar to enable him to interpret dreams. So on one hand, the king recognizes the God as the source of the blessing, but he reverts almost immediately to giving his false gods credit for things. And that's the mistake he made. Next, he relates his dream to Daniel. He tells Daniel the dream. He says that while he was in his bed, he saw a great tree in the middle of the land, in the middle of Babylon. And this tree was visible to the whole world. It provided a place for the birds and the beasts to live, and it fed them all. Nebuchadnezzar explains that a messenger came down from heaven, and he calls him a holy one, making reference to his gods, not the God, when in reality, the, this messenger was from the God. He was bringing him a message from God, the only real God in the universe. The messenger said that the tree would be cut down and stripped off, and all the animals and the birds would flee from the tree. But the stump of the tree would remain and would be bound with iron and bronze. The messenger explains that a man, and this he's referring to Nebuchadnezzar, would be drenched with the dew of heaven and would live with the animals, eating grass like an animal, and this man would have the mind of an animal. This would continue for seven times, is what the scripture says, which probably stands for seven years, seven divisions of time. 
This messenger even tells Nebuchadnezzar why the dream was sent to him. And it is this, that the most high God is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes and sets over them the lowliest of men. That's in Daniel 4, 17. In the very next verse, the king goes right back to asking Daniel to interpret the dream because <clears throat> the spirits of his gods are in Daniel. So he goes right back to giving credit for his false gods, which is totally erroneous. Now, I think about the progress we've made in the pandemic. Pretty profound when you think about it. Our leaders are crediting the science and the exercise of government control, shutting down the economy, wearing masks along with social distancing, and now we credit the vaccine. We probably should. Could all of those things be our false gods? What, what about this? What about giving God credit for blessing, regardless how he got it done? You know, it really doesn't matter. God blessed. He used, maybe he used herd immunity, the vaccine, some of the efforts of the American people. The government could be focused on false gods and might be missing the reality that God is sovereign over America and certainly has blessed us with some deliverance from the pandemic. Here's an important question. Why would we care what God used to make the pandemic go away? He can do anything he wants, and we want him to. And we ought to be before him all the time in prayer, asking him to move and deliver us from the pandemic. And you know what? He's sovereign. He can do that. We have government officials and former government officials taking credit for doing things that are the blessing of God who is sovereign over us, who rules us, whether we like it or not. You know, Our answers and affirmations of wisdom and success might just be pointing out our false gods. It's easy to do that. We could be making the error of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel now gives the king the interpretation of the dream. He explains it to him. The king and his rule are the tree. His rule and his greatness have ruled the world, and he is uh, totally dominant in the known world of his time. He kind of runs the whole show. The point of the tree coming down and being stripped is that the king's rule would be taken away from him. He would live like an animal for seven times, again, probably seven years. King Nebuchadnezzar would live like an animal without being king of Babylon for this period of seven times. He would be, he would, he would, uh, he needed to recognize that his, that things were going to be changed and that he was going down until he recognized that God is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and can do what he wants with them. Twelve months later, the prophecy of the dream comes to pass. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, is walking on the roof of his palace. And this is what he said. This is in Daniel 4, verse 30. He said, Is not the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty? Kind of full of himself, you know. Nebuchadnezzar is giving himself credit for all that he has and all that Babylon is. And you know what happens when he does that? He ends up being his own false God. The moment that people who should know better take credit for great things they think they have done, God has a way of illustrating that he's sovereign. And he does that for Nebuchadnezzar. He will take the thing you think you built away, demonstrating it's not yours, it's God. God owns everything. We need to never forget that. Guess what comes next? A voice from heaven says, your royal authority has been taken from you. That's God speaking to Daniel in Daniel 4, verse 31. Nebuchadnezzar went from king of the dominant world power to a man with the mind and the life of an animal for seven times, just exactly like God said. Why? He would not recognize God as sovereign over the kingdoms of men. At the end of seven times, the king raised his eyes to heaven and recognized God as sovereign, and his sanity was restored, and his kingdom was restored. All the government officials and big shots were searching him out again. Nebuchadnezzar was restored to his throne, and he was bigger and better than ever. 
it could be that the era of Nebuchadnezzar is a pandemic in Washington, D.C. and Sacramento. I said that because it is, okay? And we, we, we think that we're in charge. What, what seems to be the dominant false god in this country is power over people. The real purpose of government is not to exercise power over people. It's to serve people, not rule people. And we need to recognize, certainly in our form of government, that is the case. In recent times, some have removed the phrase, one nation under God from the Pledge of Allegiance. Huge mistake, massive error. If there's one thing we need, if there's one thing we need, it is to really be one nation under God. We have strayed a long way from that. Our governmental need, leaders need to affirm that God is sovereign. And I don't hear much of that, if any of that, these days. Uh, folks, I supported Donald Trump's policy stands. His policies got us energy, energy independent for the first time in 70 years, took employment higher than ever until the pandemic hit, raised wages for working people for the first time this century and much more. His style bothered me because it comes off as arrogant. That's not healthy. Uh, I would have liked for to see him give God more credit and be humble. I voted for him. And I would again because of his policy. The current crowd in Washington, D.C. is focused on the most blatant power grab in American history, which is the polar opposite of humility. It is the same in Sacramento. Uh, it, it seems to me as though many, maybe most of our political types are focused on the error of Nebuchadnezzar and need a huge dose of humility and a huge dose of God consciousness. The false god of power is dangerous. It's dangerous for populations and it's dangerous for leaders. It's dangerous to everybody involved. Think of Saddam Hussein. You may remember some of the pictures of him strutting around like a rooster, shooting a shotgun in the air with his funny little hat on and and, and and decimating and devastating the people of his country. He, he worshiped the false god of power and himself, you know. Last time I saw him, he was hanging from a rope on the gallows, dead. He ruled the same kingdom Nebuchadnezzar ruled. And the point is this, beware of the false god of power. Nebuchadnezzar got it right in Daniel 4, verse 37. And this is a very important verse. He said this, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the king of heaven, because everything he does is right, and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Nobody knew that better than Nebuchadnezzar. Our government officials at the national, state, and local level need to affirm the same attitude of coming under the king of heaven. That is the God with a big G. So our government is tangled up with the worship of power. So what do we do? How do you and I respond to that? Here, here's, here's what I really think is important. Start by personally turning from the error of Nebuchadnezzar. Personally turn from that in our life and you know, vote that kind of conscience when it comes up. But personally, it starts with us turning from the, the error of Nebuchadnezzar in our own lives. Try this affirmation, and I want to go first. And I'm going to use verse 37 of the text to make a personal affirmation, okay? And then you should do this too, okay? I, and this is my personal affirmation. I, citizen Tom West, praise and exalt the King of Heaven because everything he does is right, and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Folks, let us get God right and avoid the error of Nebuchadnezzar. And then let us invite others to include, certainly, our political leaders to follow our lead and vote for people who follow that kind of a lead. Then we can claim Romans 837, in the midst of difficult times in our country, knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us.
Would you pray with me? Father, we come into your presence. We pray for a spirit of repentance in America, a spirit that recognizes that you are sovereign. I pray for that spirit in our people. I pray for that spirit to descend on our government leaders and infect them. I pray for that spirit to be pandemic in this country and in the state of California. I do it in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope that you will subscribe to my little YouTube channel. Hope you'll share this with other people. And I'll see you late on Tuesday or early on Wednesday for my midweek word. God bless you and be faithful to Jesus.